All right. Hello there. This is Sam Wilker from thinkparticle.com, and boy, do I have a treat for you today. Oh my gosh. So, we've we've all heard, like any seasoned Cinema 4D user has heard of the term coffee. It's the scripting language. There's also Python, which is, in my opinion, far better. But I haven't used Python before, so... Well, actually, I've neither, I haven't used coffee either. But today, I was working on something, a, a little secret with a good friend of mine. You may know him as iDesign. Um, we'll be coming out with that soon. But we've been working on something, and I, I was building something with Espresso and just required a little bit of coffee. And I wanted to share the code with you. It's amazingly simple. But look at this. Look, I've got the geo settings, and it selects a certain object, right? So I'm going to teach you the technical part and go into the theory. And the best part is this is going to be one of my shortest tutorials ever. It's that easy. Literally going to be like a 12-minute tutorial, which is completely pathetic, I know. But, you know, anyways. So we have a clone, or we have a cone, we have a sphere, and a cube. Let's reorder those, so... There we go. And we have them under Geo, a Geometry, a uh, Null Object. Not required, just cleanliness. Okay, and we have an Instant Object. An Instance Object. So if we had this open at all points, we could change this to, say, Cube, and go in and see that it says Cube. And the only other thing we have is a, an Expresso tag. And we have a Switch Statement, um, Null Object dragged in. We have all of our Geo dragged in, our Geometry. We have a coffee script and a, an instance object. So let's just delete this really quick. And let's completely remake it out of scratch. It's literally that fast. So let's make an old object. Let's call it a uh, switch statement. Let's add now if you hold shift you can add these really nicely. So yeah, let's do that. Let's do something fun, just something practical. So let's say a bulge deformer a melt deformer whoops not right there okay and a displaced deformer and let's grab these and put these in a deformers no object and place these right here and let's under here put an instance object and let's try really quick to make sure that works Hmm, that might not work, so we might just skip doing that. But, yeah, that won't work. Well, that sucks, but, yeah. We need to put these, and we'll just really quick um, put Geo. Um, now, this is this is relatively new to me, so I didn't know that wouldn't work, but, oh well, we'll have to work with it. So under Geometry, we can put, um, let's put a sphere, let's put a cylinder, a cube. And uh, let's see, cube cylinder sphere. Then right click up here and add a, an espresso tag. Um, grab the three of these, drag them in. Grab this up here, drag it in. Grab this right here, drag it in. And then you can just hit control tab and make this huge. Okay. So let's see, what do we have right here? Let's add an espresso tag under here. And get rid of that link. And uh, what I'm doing right here is I'm adding types. So click on here, and you want the first one to be a real. You want the rest of them to be links. And then over here, we want to set these as objects. Um, yep. And then we want to set the switch statement to. Uh, oh, right, we have to do that. Um, we'll go right here, click on user data, manage user data, create a group, drag it out, call it options. I hate the user data thing. It looks like you're just adding user data. I, I want to have an options tab to make it look really cool. So let's do a switch. And uh, any other one, I called it something else, but we'll call it that for now. Cycle. And let's call these, let's see. And what you have to do here is do zero um, semicolon cube. Uh, one semicolon cylinder. Two semicolon sphere. So you start with zero because it's the zero index. Um, count in, in, the, in this in a switch statement um, with like cycles and stuff. You have to count with uh, like zero, one, two, three, four, five. Not one, two, three, four, five. You always start with a zero. So now that we have that, we can go under options and add that. 
and we will drag that into input 1, cube into input 2, cylinder into input 3, sphere into input 4, and drag the output into the switch statement. And we are, oh, create a new output, make it a link, and then drag it into the reference object right there. Okay, click on the coffee editor, and then we are almost done. So, output is not equal to what that was right there. Here, let's make it right now. Um, Alright, so we do an if statement, open parentheses, input 1, now make sure that is, uh, that is a capital I, it's whatever this input right here is named, is equals to, so input 1 is equal to, that's where the double equals, make sure there's two of them next to each other, you could even do three, that's, uh, uh, actually I don't know if three would work, but uh, it does in something like JavaScript or PHP. It works in Python as well. Um, so an if statement, so we're saying, so here's our, here's our function really quick, just so you understand this. This is a function, and this is what runs. Let's call it pool guys. Now let's call it main. We have to have a main function. We could have other functions later, but we'll skip that. Um, I didn't know you had to have a main, but I guess you have to have a main. Um, so let's add this. Let's keep our code nice and neat and tab it over. So if input 1 is equal to, equal, equal, 0, then with these right here curly braces, which is the same thing as these right here just with a shift, um, let's say output 1 is equal to input 2. Now we copy this and paste it three times and then change this to 1, and 3, and whoops, 2, and 4. <laughs> excuse me. All right, now, uh, excuse me. Now we'll hit execute, and there are no errors. Um, and if we take all of these and drag them over, say 1,000 centimeters, grab the cube, drag it to the left, say 250 centimeters, and the sphere to the right, 250 centimeters. That's just cleanliness and everything. But we have now got, not only do we have a uh, switch statement right here that we can change, but we can animate it. So switch right here, um, change it to cube, and it'll say as a, uh, whoops, Okay, it'll stay as a sphere until we hit that keyframe. So then we can delete those keyframes. Don't worry about those. But anyways, that's, that's really how it is, how it's done. So we can change it to cube, cylinder, sphere, and um, that is on top of adding other types of user data. There's tons of user data you can use. I'll be doing more on that later. Um, in fact, I think I'll do an entire series on that. Um, do you guys want that? Um, if, if I can get enough people to say yes, then I'll absolutely do it. I, I know there's people out there that will watch it. I just, I just want you guys to say yes. You know, feel the love. But anyways, really quick, um, let's, let's review this. And we have eight minutes in, so I'm keeping my word to you. We have these data types, and they're called input. So a bool, um, a, a true or false statement. Those are used in algorithms. Google it if you don't know what an algorithm is. It is spelled like this. Algorithm. I think. Let's, let's hop into Google real quick and algorithm. Yep, that's spelled right. Okay, so, whoops. There we go. Okay, so we have algorithms that use a lot of bools. They use if statements, which you guys witnessed right here. We use switch statements, for loops, while loops, for each loops, do while loops. Um, coding is complex, but once you get the basics down, you really can do any language. Um, what we're using is links, which are really useful for, say, manage user data, add option. We want to add a link, and we will call it material. And then we create a new material, and, oops, bye, Dom. Okay. Um, grab the three of these, add a texture tag, drag the three of these in. So we will be going a little long, but um, this will cover coffee, and uh, it will cover um, 
some other user data settings. So there you go. You get a lot out of this. And by the way, I better see some awesome stuff coming out of this, guys. This is this is too easy to not use. So basically, we just set the material, whatever is in here, to the material of these objects. And we can set a different material for each of these. But look, they're all red now. And we can set a an if statement that has links. Like we just use these are links, the same type as these. So we could actually have a sphere, and that sphere could have a coffee node attached to it with the espresso tag, and we could actually have a drop down that has different materials, and you can even add them to layers and hide them so you make it magical and no one knows how you do it, unless they're smart enough to go look at the layers. But um, then you can say, hey, look, I'd like, um, instead of saying cube, I'd like the shiny material, or the diffused material, or the crazy material that's got intense displacement. So there's another concept for you. Um, you can use integers, file names, links, matrices, on, real, string, time, vector. Vector is like a um, location. It's uh, x, y, z coordinates. Um, and the same applies to the output. And uh, say you want to do an if statement that says, look, I have this dropdown. I'm going to fill it in the user data section. And I have the objects underneath. And I want to say I have five different splines and apply a certain one to a preset tool with a sweep nerbs, but I have to have my um, drop down work. Well the coffee node will make it work. You just put an instance node in and then you drop in um, the output of your coffee which is also a link type into the link type for the reference object for the instance. So guys, that's that's incredibly easy to do. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. I hope you learned a lot. I learned a massive amount today. Um, just uh, keep your eyes out for what uh, EJ and I are making. Uh, and also, uh, I'm pretty sure that Charles Rowland is involved too. Um, that's what EJ says, but I don't know. We'll see. I hope he is. He's awesome. Let's see. Not Charles Rowland. It's Raging Claw. So shout out to Raging Claw, the Python expert of all Cinema 4D awesomeness. And then the other awesome guy behind this, iDesign. He gets a lot of shoutouts from Maxon. In fact, guys, if you're going to NAB this year, go check him out. That's in a, I think it's in a couple weeks. I'm actually not sure when it is, but guess what? He's going to be speaking live at um, uh, NAB for Maxon. So he will actually be showing our tool there. It's going to be really exciting. Oh, I said tool. Shouldn't have even given that much away. It's whatever we're making. You don't know what it is, but it's cool, and he's going to talk about it there. So, And uh, I hope you guys are excited to use this as much as I am. It's awesome. I love making presets, hence my whole entire content browser full of render kit items, my mo kit. They're not really filled. And then there's other things like the GSG kit. Uh, he has a ton of them. They're awesome. Go invest in those. Oh, worth it. Absolutely. He makes great tutorials. But where his real value is, is his kits. So guys, go buy them. Um, and uh, I hope you guys learned a lot. So thanks for watching. And oh, crap. 13 and a half minutes. So I guess we didn't do the 12 minutes, but I added more. So thanks for watching. I'm Sam from thinkparticle.com, and I'll be back more soon with a complete um, understanding of coffee, hopefully. Well, it's going to take a while for me, but uh, I'll share whatever I find out with you guys. All right, see you later.